Ezekiel chapter 45 verse 10. We're still in the millennial kingdom. After the seven years of the tribulation period. Church has been raptured before the tribulation period. Jesus Christ has not, but yet yeah, Jesus Christ has come back. He sets up the temple, the temple worship. Israel knows who they are. They know their tribes. We've been looking at the temple. We've been looking at the law, the priests, the sacrifices. He shall have just balances and a just ephah and a just bath. Now, these are measurements. Bath doesn't mean, you know, you, get, you take a bath, clean yourself up with soap and water. It, it's a measurement. You know, there's a lot of pl places that this would fall under condemnation of the great United States of America, the Christian nation. Because when you drive up to a gas pump, you're not getting what that gas pump says you're getting. In the millennium, if it's an EFOB, it better be an EFOB. I worked grocery stores many years, and when you have like a salad bar or a soup bar, you have what you have a tear weight. And it would be whatever that utensil, that tin or plastic or styrofoam utensil you're using, it's supposed to be that weight is supposed to be subtracted from the weight. Of your salad or your soup or whatever you get. That's a joke. Let me tell you that. That's a joke. So balances, ephah, and bath. You'll find this throughout the reading of the Bible, these names, if you read your Bible. The ephah and the bath shall be of one measure. So you don't have a bath for the Democrats, you don't have a bath for the little people. You don't have the bath for, you know, storekeepers. You don't have a bath for colored people. You don't have a bath for female. You don't have a bath for six-year-olds. You have one standard of bath. One standard of ephah. Regardless of race, sex, creed, it is a just balances plural. And you will get what you pay for. You won't be uh, lowered. You won't get less. And you won't get more. Shall be one measure. Then the bath may, con may contain... There's an object may contain the tenth part, one tenth of a homer. So it's a tithe. Tithe is a tenth. Tithing's under the law. And the ephah, the tenth part of a homer. So you see where. Bath and ephah are the one measure. Bath is a tenth of a homer, and an ephah is a tenth of a homer. They're the same. And the measure thereof shall be after the homer. So when it comes to bath and ephah, the, the standard measurement is a homer. And what you would be today is how many pints go into a gallon. Gallon would be the basis, the homer. How many quarts? All the measurements that leads up to a homer, all the measurements leads up to a gallon. The shekel. Now the shekel is, 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 a, is, a, is a money, monumentary value it's also a, a measurement. Shall be 20 gerahs. 20 shekels. 5 and 20 shekels. 15 shekels. Shall be your manna. 
I don't understand what this is. We will when we get to the millennium. But hey, 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 hey. Uh, let, let's look at now. Let's look at this American eye because America, the great nation. Ready? He shall have just balances and a just ephah and a just bath. And the ephah and the bath shall be of one measure that the that that the bath may contain the tenth part of a homer, and the ephah the tenth part of a homer, and the measure thereof shall be after the homer, and the shekel shall be twenty geras, twenty shekels, five and twenty shekels, twenty-five, fifteen shekels shall be your mena. Where do you see your three-quarter inch wrench? Where do you see that? Where do you see gallon? Where do you see cups? Where do you see teaspoon? Where do you see... Do you see any American measurements? <laughs> Ain't none. It's all Hebrew. See, you're not going to need a toolbox with American standard and metric. And then you're going to have these special screwdrivers for the headlights and, and dashboard. you got to buy all these measurements. To work on your car and work on your house so these companies can, can steal your money from your wallet. That ain't going to happen in the millennium. You don't have, you know, an EFOB wrench or whatever it would be and half an EFOB and three-quarter EFOB and one-eighth tree. And you don't have that. And then you do not get ripped off. Because anybody who would try to rip you off knows that Jesus Christ is seated on the throne of David and they don't want to go before Jesus Christ and be found at fault. Because the lake of fire at the Dead Sea, well, okay, that's where you're going to go. Everything's going to be right and proper. This is the oblation that ye shall offer. Talking to the Jews in the millennium. Okay, now we got the measurement straight. You see what the measurement straight, when you're going, we're going to look at the offering. You better have the offering. You better not show up with a kangaroo for your sin offering. That ain't proof. Well, that's what I call it, kangaroos. All right. Because today's society, all right, we'll take your kangaroo. Man, you know what? You're a good person. You're a person of color. You keep your kangaroo and we'll still let you. You came in 45 place of 46. We'll still give you a ribbon or a trophy. Not under Jesus Christ. Not in the millennium. This is the oblation that ye shall offer. The sixth part of an ether of a homer of wheat. Now see the homer? Homer is the standard of an ephah, and then from that standard you get a sixth part of an ephah. It's not ten. It's a six. Well, how come churches don't give a sixth part? <laughs> Why did you jump right to the 10 right away? In the law, there's a sixth part. A wheat. And the principle of two harvests of Israel is wheat and barley. And then you have the, 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 the grapes and the wine and the figs and the olives and oil. But of wheat. And it's kind of funny because when you're looking, I've been just studying the, the time and the calendars on it. Wheat is mentioned first, but barley is harvested first, then wheat. And now I can go over to the book of Ruth and she, she's there at the barley harvest. And he tells her to stay here to the wheat harvest. Well, I can do some figuring now. Because I studied the Word of God. I've studied the Bible. I've looked at things. 
and shall give the sixth part of an ephah of a homer of barley. Concerning the ordinance of oil, this is not petroleum, this is olive oil. A bath of oil. Now that doesn't mean you go fill your bathtub up with oil. It's, it's a measurement. Ye shall offer the tenth part of a bath out of the core. So the core is the foundation of the bath. Again, we would look at today is how many cups in a gallon or how many pints in a gallon. How many baths are in a core? That gets a tenth part. When it comes to the oil, which is a type of the Holy Spirit, 10%. Wheat makes bread. Barley makes bread. Bread is a type of the Word of God. A sixth part. Do you know how that bread was laid out in Moses' tabernacle and, and Solomon's tabernacle? Six and six, what does that say? 66 books in verse 13. How is that a winky dinky? Wheat and barley makes bread. You got six and six, 66 books. And the Holy Spirit, 10% olive oil, which the Bible says, and this is hard for me to say, oil, olive. I don't know why it's so hard to say, but the Bible says oil, olive. i got to think about that in order to say it. Which is an homer, and a homer is ten baths. <laughs> you know what most of your Christians think a homer is? The guy hits the ball and goes up and out, the, out, out in the field. And everybody gets to run all the plates. That's your typical Christian homer. So a tenth part of a bath out of a core. For ten baths are a homer. And then you run back to what we already read. Said Ephah and a bath are, are one measure of bath may contain ten part of a homer. I don't understand the measurement. Something there. So, one lamb out of the flock, out of 200, out of fat pastures. Of now, look at that. Don't go. Okay, one lamb. All right, there's one lamb. No. You see, you can. Have Mary's little lamb. I'll, Mary, I'll give you money for your little lamb. Nope. That's not going to do. Because that lamb has to come out of the flock, a flock of lambs, a flock of sheep and rams. And then it has to be out of 200. That's way less than the tithe. I'm pointing out the tithe tonight. If it was to be tithe of 200, you would need 20 lambs. Out of fat pasture. Past, and now listen, we're in the millennium now. Every pasture is going to be fat because the sheep are going to eat the grass and the grass is going to be right back. Boing, it's back. <laughs> You know that man that goes out and, and, and he makes the hole and his wife plants the seed and the children be not in them that afternoon are, are picking the fruits and crops. And this is for a meat offering and for a burnt offering, for a peace offering. This is all in Leviticus and make reconciliation for them. Save the Lord. Now reconciliation that's a word that you don't find in the churches today, and you don't find repentance. Repentance is, Lord, I am sorry for my sin. What is reconciliation? I'm going to show you how sorry I am for my sin. 
You know, I stole something from somebody. Lord, I repent of the thief. Bible says thou shalt not steal. And then you go make it back up. You, you give back plus some to the person you stole up. That's reconciliation. You are a terrible child to your parents or your mother or your father. And you, you repent to the Lord because you sinned against the Holy God. And then you go back to your mother. You go back to your father and you say, I am sorry. That's reconciliation. You've been running your big mouth in church about someone in church. And you repent of your big mouth and you go up to that person and the people that you've been speaking to say, listen, I lied. I have not said that. That's reconciliation. Now, repentance is not in the modern church today. You know reconciliation is not. We put a man in jail, but we don't charge that man for the crimes that he's done by making reconciliation. A man that goes into a store and steals jewelry will go to jail for five months, five years, whatever it is. Oh, I paid my debt to society. No, you didn't. You didn't pay that man that you stole the jewelry from. So even our government doesn't have the reconciliation. There's a time in the Bible age if you got caught with stealing, you paid back and you worked for that person wages to make it back. All the people of the land. Now look at that. All the people of the land. That's all the people. Israel and Gentile shall give this oblation for the prince of Israel. That goes to Jesus. That goes to God. A lot of your pastors today in their Baptist church and their church, you got to give a tithe. You got to give it to me because I'm God. <laughs> I tell you what to do. That's Nicotelian. That's Nicotelianism. God hates that. God hates liars. And it shall be the prince's part to give burnt offerings. So the prince will offer burnt offerings and meat offerings and drink offerings in the feast, plural, and the new moons, the feast, you know, the Passover, the, the, the feast of unleavened bread, the feast of the tabernacles, uh, the day of atonement. Those are the feasts. The new moon is the beginning of the months. So there'll be 12. There are seven main feasts. There are 12 months in the Sabbath. That's the Saturday weekly Sabbath, I'm assuming, the calendar. Which I, it didn't come up. I assume there's 52, maybe. How many weeks there are in the year of a Jewish calendar. And all the solemnities of the house of Israel... He shall prepare the, the sin offering and the meat offering, the burnt offering, the peace offerings that make reconciling, reconciliation for the house of Israel. Now, that's not Jesus, because Jesus does not need to make a sin offering. He already made a sin offering. That's got to be David. Do... The, the Jews, do the, the, the Gentiles that go into millennia, do they become instantly non-sinners? No, because why would you need, you wouldn't need the sin offering? Those are not going to sin are the angels that are there. Those Satan's angels are around. Satan's locked up. The apostles are not going to sin. They're under the church age. The Christians that are there are not going to sin because we've been judged at the judgment seat of Christ and everything. All our sins are gone. We, we've got the crowns. we got the inheritance. we got the white robes. But they're the people in the land. The, the, nation, the Gentiles are there because what they did for the Jew unknowingly in the tribulation period, they're going to sin. The Jews are going to sin. Thus saith the Lord God, in the first month, 
Not January. I learned a particular thing. The months and the days are named for numbers. But the first month is Abed. The first day of the month. That would be a full moon. New moon. They shall take a young bullock without blemish. And cleanse the sanctuary. So the beginning of the new years. They're going to slay. A bullock. And the priest. Shall take the blood of the sin offering. The bullock. And put upon the posts of the house. We read about those posts. Upon the four corners of the settle of the altar. That brazen altar has got got horn. That's what you would tie the, the animal to. And upon the post of the gate of the inner court. And so thou shalt do the seventh day of the month for everyone that's erreth. That's sinning not with a purpose. That's a sin. You get so angry and you, you say that four-letter word, that bad word out of your mouth. You didn't plan on saying it. If David never touched Bathsheba, it would have been an error. That second look. I shouldn't have done that. But the third or fourth look where it was, and he ends up in bed with her. Now that's not error. That's adultery. Even in the law and now in the millennium, there is no reconciliation. There is no offer if you go out and sin purposely. Man, that happened in the early church. I, I forget what the husband and wife name was. They, they got together and said, you know, honey, we sold our property and everybody's giving the money to it. Yeah. Let's say we sold it for so much and keep some of it back. Okay. okay. Peter says, you lied to the Holy Ghost. You lied to God. Boom. They're up dead right there at the door. And the thing is, when I preach, hopefully I can get back to doing it. When I'm at the farmer's market, there's sometimes I tell them, listen, you're without excuse. If you and I walk away from today, and I preach the gospel to you, and you reject the gospel, that, that's not error, that's rebellion. And that's a sin, because that's what Adam and Eve done. They rebelled against the word of God. They knew they were doing it. And some of our sins, our sins, and yes, including me, us Baptist Christians, or Christian Baptists, we sin ignorantly that, oh, we didn't want. Even that one sin in our life, we may do it, and you know we didn't, didn't know we were going to do it. And, but there's sometimes that sin, we do do it, and we want to do it. And sometimes I'm wondering when we sin like that, even if we confess it to the Lord, uh, where's our standing? Because we wanted to do it. We love to do it. I like it. I tell you again, oh, style to get off. I'm going to tell you, every year the, the Catholic, the Baptist Catholic, they go in there, oh, we just love Easter. We just love Christmas. It's a pagan holiday. I don't care what style he says. I'm going to do it. I'm going to like it. And you're just having sin to sin to sin. And you can't say, oh, Lord, I'm sorry. You had a man tell you it's wrong. He's trying to help you. And that goes with perverted Bibles. That goes with the preacher preaching by the Holy Spirit. An error is, I've sinned, I really didn't plan to do it. 
And even if it's one of your favorite sins, and it happens, and it's one of those things that happens. I mean, if you got a problem with anger or something like that, you know, some guy cuts you off and you you give him that finger. <laughs> now, if you're sitting at your desk and your boss comes, I hate that, and then you give him the finger. <laughs> That's not Aaron. That's you wanted to. And don't cry, baby, to God that you just lost your job. Or you got something bad written in your file. The first month, in the 14th day of that month, that's the Passover. You shall have the Passover. A feast of seven days that includes the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And unleavened bread shall be eaten. I've had that. Not unleavened bread is better than bread. I tell you, if you ever want to get fat, you ever want to be diabetic and have trouble, don't go into a Jewish bakery. Phew, that stuff is great. We had a friend who used to give us this, this, this Jewish bread. And this thing was a big, and it was heavy. When you cut it, it didn't have those air pockets. It was all bread and nothing but bread. That's what Jesus is. He's all bread and nothing but bread, and he has no holes in it. Air pockets. And upon that day shall the prince prepare for himself. Now that's not Jesus. Jesus Christ already prepared as the Passover lamb, as the lamb of God, his sacrifice. And Hebrew said he'd done it once. This would be David. Prepare for himself, for all the people of the land, all, not just Jews. And the law said a stranger can come in and partake of the Passover. And here to follow the same rules as the Jews, you, you were not to exclude him. And Jesus Christ, Paul said, is our Passover. We're not to exclude anybody from coming to the Lamb of God to believe on him for salvation. And there are probably religion people out there if a certain person, color, race, or, or whatever, sexual orientation, all that, uh, you know, even Sodom, oh, you, know, you can't come. God can't say, no, 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 no. I may say things calling Sodomites abomination, which the Bible said, but if that man wants, or that woman wants to come to Jesus and be saved and be cleansed and reconciled and do right, come on. For the people to land a bullock for a sin offering. A what? What's that? What was to be offered on the first day of the 14th of the month, according to Exodus chapter 12? What was to be offered? What was the blood that went upon the post and over the threshold of the door? It was a lamb, wasn't it? Well, look at there, 4522, it says a bullock. Why does not it say the lamb on the Passover? Because the lamb is sitting on the throne, the king of kings and the lord of lords. You know what the Passover here? It's the reminder that that lamb sitting on the throne died for all the nation of Israel. And we're celebrating and we're memorizing today in the millennium. All the work of Jesus. But we're not going to use a lamb because it's the lamb of God. We're going to use a bull. We're going to put away your golden calf, Aaron. We're going to get rid of the cow that can't spell chicken. And we're going to get rid of the golden arches that look like boobies. And we're going to get rid of the, the, the crown bull of Burger King. 
And we're going to get rid of the, the skull of, the, of, of a cattle and the horns on the Cadillacs of Texas. We're going to get rid of all those bull, the Catholic Pope bull. We're going to get all rid of that. We're going to put it on the flames of the fire. We're going to flame boil the bull. Not for a hamburger. Not for a Big Mac. Not for Baptist chicken. We're going to offer as a sin offering because all these years we've been glorifying the idol bull and beef. Before our lamb, the Lord Jesus Christ. There are Baptist churches I've been in. Them. They worship the Chick-fil-A. If you bring our bulletin to the Chick-fil-A, you will get something. I know the church, hey, Chick-fil-A and Chick-fil-A give them or give them a discount to give them stuff for a fellowship. I only been in Chick-fil-A once, no, twice. And once I noticed that they had the idle cow that can't spell, uh, no more. Because what if that cow's name, what if, Aaron had a cow. What's the expression? Don't have a cow. Well, what was that 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 Yankee baseball play, uh, announcer all the time? Holy cow! Holy cow! Holy cow! Yeah, that's what they all are, and they put it on the flame, flame boil that Andy that cow. And I don't care if if it's if it's Roy's cow or Wendy's cow or who's ever cow. It's the lamb. Seven days of the feast, he shall prepare a burnt offering to the Lord. Seven bullocks and seven rams without blemish daily for seven days. And a kid of the goats daily for a sin offering. Kid of the goats for a sin offering. Forty-nine bullocks and forty-nine rams, and seven kid of the goats. And he shall prepare a meat offering of an ephah of a bullock for a bullock, and an ephah for a ram, and a hen of oil. Again, that's olive oil, oil olive, for an ephah. The seventh month, the fifteenth day of the month. That's the Feast of Tabernacles. Shall he do the like in the Feast of the Seven Days, according to the sin offering, got the bullock, according to the burnt offering, according to the meat offering, and according to the oil. So here we look at the Passover. Here we look at the Feast of Tabernacles. The Lamb of God was taken away the sin of the world. What I think, and many Baptist preachers are wrong, we got the Passover that died for our sin. Maybe you have the Lamb that was born. And he, he was born in a manger. Right? What animal would be one of those animals that sticks their head in that manger to feed? Would be sheep. Didn't think about that, did you? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's look at something. Let's go back over here and something. Let's go back to that lamb. It says one lamb out of the flock. All right. Out of 200, one lamb, the Lord Jesus Christ. 
out of the flock. Mary, Joseph, cousins, nephews, aunts, uncles, right? Out of 200. And there was no room for him at the end. Why? Because they were gathered together for the census, for the taxation, and it was the Feast of Tabernacles, one of those three feasts that you must go to Jerusalem. Out of fat pastors of Israel. The nation of Israel were living fat on the land. And there were all kinds of people. There was no room for Jesus. That Josephus says there had to have been over a million people in Jerusalem. Never mind Bethlehem and the neighboring areas. Because all the Jews, all the males had to be in Jerusalem at that feast. And the Roman government said everybody that's Jewish. You go to the land of your nativity. And of all those people and all the family that Jesus would be born and adopted into, that one lamb that was born in the manger where she eat And to add to the 200 and the flock, the angels went to the shepherds, not to the wise men, and said, I got something for you. If you go over to Bethlehem, you're going to find a lamb. And wouldn't it be funny? <laughs> I don't know. But wouldn't it be funny if those shepherds, wouldn't it be funny if scripture was script? wouldn't it be funny that by chance those shepherds had 99 sheep and they left the 99 sheep to go find that one? You ever think about that? And they went home and they were witnessing and rejoicing and telling, hey, we found the sheep. We found the sheep. Was that Luke chapter 15? I think it is 15 or 16. Luke 15 or 16. Let, let's read that. If I can find it. Yeah, Luke 15, 14. 14. Luke 15. And we'll pick up at Luke 15. Verse 4. Okay. Well, I can only going to be bringing up on the screen because red lettering this Bible is hard for me to read. Luke 15. And then you can see it. Alright. What man of you having a hundred sheep? If you lose one of them, now he now you can't take every type 100 percent You didn't lose Jesus. Does not leave the 99 in the wilderness. And go after that which is lost and find it. Now, Jesus is not lost. When he found it, he, he lays on his shoulders rejoicing. Say, what do you do with that one? You mean to tell me they come to a baby and they didn't pick it up? Have you ever seen a baby when a, a, a baby that when they bring into the church? I, it just goes from hand to hand to hand to hand. And when he cometh home, what did the shepherds do when they went back home? He called together his friends and neighbors and said unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. Now Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2. My eyeballs are not working well today. Let's see. 2 verse number oh, let's see. 20. Luke 2 16. 
And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph with the babe lying with the man. They, I don't think they brought the sheep. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad, saying, which was told them concerning this child. And all they heard it and wondered at the things which was told by the shepherds. The shepherds are happy and pleased. And guess what I found? What'd you find? I found a lamb. What do you mean you found a lamb? He was in the manger. Yeah, that's where you find lambs. That's where they eat. <laughs> How's that? By the way, stay in Luke chapter 2. The Feast of Tabernacles is the only feast that has eight days. Are you ready? Verse 21. And when eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child. You know how far they had to go from Bethlehem to Jerusalem for Jesus to be circumcised? Let me look it up. Seven point one miles in light vehicle. Wait a minute, wait a second. Can I do it walking? Walking. All right, set six point seven miles. It would take two hours and nine minutes to go from Bethlehem to Jerusalem on the eighth day to circumcise the baby Jesus, which would have been the eighth day of the month of the feast of tabernacle. God indwelling in the flesh of man. That's why I believe it's the feast of tabernacle. Because Jesus and God would not gotten together. Oh, okay, Father, uh, let's get born on a Roman pagan Babylonian Egyptian holiday. Sounds great. And show me where it says in the Bible, Mr. Baptist Catholic, that on Easter, Jesus, the Resurrection Sunday, Jesus rose from the grave. Show me where Easter is given as the date. And how many times Easter is not three days and three nights from the date of the Passover? And this Sunday, 2000, I mean, this year, 2022, Easter, I believe Passover is on a Tuesday or Monday this year. You can't get resurrection. Well, I'm going to listen right here. And you on Facebook, you can see, I mean, you on the video can see. All right. We want 2022 Passover. Because we're going to do the Jewish time. The Passover, okay, this year begins on Friday, April 15th. All right. Good Friday. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Friday, for Saturday night, Sunday night, uh-oh, it's not three nights. You got to have a Resurrection Monday. And how many people will go to church on Resurrection Monday? They won't come to church. The biggest, one of the biggest two years for to go to church is Easter. So we'll just say it's Sunday. Never mind. Oh yeah, it's good. even we got the Baptist Good Friday this year. Which Good Friday defiles, you can't count the Sunday three days and three nights. But overlook that because, you know, we'll bring people to church that hasn't been in church all year. And we'll pass the plate. Glory to his name, George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Benjamin Franklin Gain. And God will get you at the judgment seat of Christ, Christian, and say you were wrong. 
wood, hay, or stubble. And your entire congregation that you deceived. And that one man that spoke the truth, that one man that told you the truth, that one man you rejected the truth, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Gold, silver, precious stone. Oh, you put your gold and silver on your bale tree. Silver and gold. Silver and gold. No, you're going overtime. I don't care. It's the truth. And when I speak the truth, I believe the Holy Spirit said, work for them lungs, work for that heart, and preach the truth. Because somebody's going to watch this video, and somebody's going to learn. They're going to learn, hey, I want to do right and please God, or I'm going to keep on going with my sins and displease God.